call upon the next speaker, the Honorable Mu Kepa. You have the floor, ma'am. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Mr. Speaker, sir, as you are well aware, I am not an economist, nor do I have any business experience. But like most women in Fiji, I am reasonably good at multitasking because I not only have to attend to my, my parliamentary responsibilities, but I also have to carry out my other traditional roles in the village, as well as cater to my family and household needs. Like any other entity, managing a household involves watching our income and expenditures carefully to ensure that when catering for my family's needs, I first take care of our fixed commitments before our household needs, both in Suva and in the village, and that it all adds up based on tight control of our household budget, and due to my being a widow for many years now, and for the sake of my independence, I have to keep very tight control of our finances, so that at the end of the day, Mr. Speaker, sir, our needs are met, and we have savings for a rainy day. Because as most housewives know, when it comes to purchasing for our family's needs, we must remain within our budget. And so we cannot afford to develop bad habits, like that of the Minister of Economy, where he is unable to control the national budget, and we end up spending well beyond our means. As I see it, Mr. Speaker, sir, the difference between the Minister's budget and the budget of the ordinary housewives is this, because we can only spend our own money. We have to watch every dollar, in fact, every cent, as we cannot afford to let the dollars run away from us. The funds that the minister has at his disposal is not his own personal funds. Therefore, the responsibility is greater in that the funds belong to the taxpayers of Fiji, which include all of the housewives in Fiji, as well as all of the people of this country, as it mainly comes from taxes and penalties imposed upon the people. So he has to have a more responsible, accountable, and caring attitude where he cannot afford to be reckless and careless when it comes to spending. Which brings me to the budget, Mr. Speaker, sir. As I see it, the basic principles of managing a government is not much different from managing household expenses. The difference being that the government's funding runs into billions of dollars, whilst my household budget is in the thousands. But the need for prudent management and common sense ap applies equally to both. And here, Mr. Speaker, sir, we take heed from very wise words in the Bible, where we are told the importance of the, little, of the little things by the suggestion that if we are faithful in the little things, we will be faithful in much. If we are dishonest in little things, we will be dishonest in much. And this is in regard to a wealthy man who hired a manager to oversee his business enterprises where it was apparent that the manager was incompetent and wasteful. Like the wastefulness of the government hired vehicles that cost $82,191 per day. Why does the government leasing have to be renewed almost every year? Why do some government ministers have to have more than one ministerial vehicle at their beck and call? Why such vanity, Honorable Speaker? What happens if you are not returned to Parliament after the elections and you become once again just another citizen like so many ordinary housewives facing the reality check of everyday life? It's then that the little things, the dollars and cents that matter so much to the ordinary housewives will become more relevant to each one of us when we are back to square one, living the life of ordinary citizens. For example, for example, when presenting the 2022-2023 budget in Parliament, the Minister for Economy referred to the budget as the blueprint for his next financial year and a prudent, responsible and visionary one, which he has said rested on the pillars of infrastructure, education and health. Mr. Speaker, very briefly on infrastructure. I'd like to thank the Minister, Honorable Speaker, for the water situation in Rewa, in that most of the time, water pressure is good. On the landing at Nasali, we are grateful for the railings and the ramp, enabling persons with disabilities to access both sides of the river. And also the ablution block at Mburnibundi, Honorable Speaker, sir. 
just the electricity uh, on the bus because some areas in my own village we have 150 of the 240 volts if you can have a I will now look at education, Honorable Speaker, that for the past 15 years, education has had no sense of direction. Had the Cabinet paid attention to the Minister for Education in 2015, when he talked about an education commission, and for once he made sense. Millions of dollars would not have been squandered, millions of dollars would not have been squandered on hastily put together and hastily removed policies, also known as government initiatives, like milk for year one students and the much touted technical colleges, including toing and froing from exams to classroom based assessment back to exams. It's no wonder teachers and students and other stakeholders, our Honorable Speaker, did not know whether they were coming and going. And as such, where Fiji was once amongst the top in the Pacific, literacy and numeracy have suffered with so many students, even up to year eight. And you only have to ask any parent, and they will confirm about the very poor reading and writing skills their children have. Government, Honorable Speaker, could take a leaf out of the Education Commission report of 2000 titled Learning Together, Directions for Education in the Fiji Islands, which was to undertake a comprehensive view of Fiji's education system. Among other things, it was designed to look at developing our human and intellectual resources, inculcate in our children and young people the values of living and learning together, as they are crucial building blocks for our success as a multi-ethnic and multicultural nation. The six-member commission, Honorable Speaker, consisted of the chair, Professor Kazim Bakus from Canada, Dr. Evelyn Coxon from New Zealand, Professor Roy Sadler from Australia and from Fiji, Mrs. Uh, Suliana Siwatimbao, Professor Subramani, and Dr. Esther Williams. A member of that commission, Honorable Speaker, sir, currently still in the education sector, is Professor Subramani at the University of Fiji. Dr. Esther Williams may still be available. Also mentioned in the commission report that, assistant, that assisted in the commission's work were professionals like Dr. Helen Tawola, Unaisi Namombo, who is now a fully-fledged professor at FNU, and Philippe Chitoko of USP. That could be the starting point for the work or the basis of a new education commission. In December 1999, Honorable Speaker, sir, with approval by the cabinet at the time, Honorable Pratap Chan, the Minister for Education, required the commission to submit a report on its findings within six months from the commencement of its work and also required it to have extensive consultations throughout the country. Fundings for this commission were sourced from the Ministry of Education budget and supplemented by grant contributions from AusAid, NZODA, and the Canada Fund. The FDA government based many of its education policies on this Education Fiji 2020 strategic plan. Had the Fiji First government continued with it, this very, with this very detailed and structured plan, the students of Fiji would have been the beneficiaries with a higher standard of literacy and numeracy. Honorable Speaker, sir, it would be an advantage to political, for political parties running in the next general elections to have the setting up of an education commission included in their manifesto, as it also deals with student loan schemes, administration of scholarships, and loans and directions for change. Failing that, Honorable Speaker, education would continue to slide downhill on a slippery slope. Although the University of the South Pacific is mentioned in the Education Commission report, it is disappointing, Honorable Speaker, to note the absence of its grant in the 2022 to 2023 budget estimates. Oh, Honorable Speaker, sir, did I miss something? The presidents of both the USP staff and USP staff unions, unions have highlighted that the withholding of the grant payments for 2020, 2021, and 2022 already passed in Parliament, I might add, Honorable Speaker, totaling 78.4 million are not beneficial, not beneficial to the students, the staff, the university, or anyone associated with the university, except maybe to someone's pride and sense of great power. Anyone wielding such power, even over Parliament, has to be mindful that pride comes before fall. 
regardless of how long or how short you have had the power and the pride that comes with it, that the fall will come and to be prepared for it. So to the staff and students and to the many housewives associated with USP, the power is in your hands. Very simply, Honorable Speaker, sir, claim that power and do not tick any Fiji First candidate as they are all part of the colluding and conspiring against USP. And it would be an advantage to any political party to promise to make good with USP that that unpaid grant of 78.4 million, including what should have been included in the 2022-2023 uh, budget will be honored. After all, Honorable Speaker, sir, if the economy is in such good hands, the total unpaid grant should be part in Head 50. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, sir, in terms of the indigenous people, which others have already spoken of, which other members have already spoken on, which I will not address, except to plead with Honorable Prime Minister, yeah. in terms of the so-called Ngolingoli owners. Yeah. Honorable uh, Speaker, sir, the Honorable uh, Prime Minister has repeatedly said that all payments have been made. I beg to differ in that, Honorable Speaker. Previously, the Ngolingoli owners were paid fishing license fees for those fishing in the Ngolingoli. In the past few years, no such payment has been made. No other Ngolingoli owner, of which there are over 400, is willing to say anything, as they are too embarrassed and do not want to call the Honorable Prime Minister a liar. No satisfactory response has come from the Ministry of Fisheries or the Tokyo Affairs, which is supposed to be handling this payment. We have been advised, however, that there is a trust fund for damage to the Ngolingoli. How that works? No Ngolingoli owner seems to know, as there is no statement of accounts. What the balance is, Honorable uh, Speaker, sir, nobody knows. Will it suffer the same fate as the payment of license uh, fees to Ngolingoli owners? Perhaps only time will tell. In conclusion, Honorable Speaker, on another note, I would like to thank the Honorable Prime Minister for giving Rewa the opportunity to showcase our youth, or so so okay Rewa, at the, tradition, at the traditional ceremonies of welcome at the opening of the Rio Provincial Council at Lomani Koro Rewa on the 18th of July. Having the youth participate, Honorable uh, Speaker, was a challenge in that we had to arouse and maintain their interest to showcase their, their talent in age-old ceremonies with its related protocols, which many people had written off as irrelevant. We had to incorporate modern technology, Honorable Speaker, to maintain this interest, this interest from the youth. So we had to have live streaming, a LED screen, and a drone to confirm that tradition and culture are relevant and applicable to the modern, rapidly evolving world where, they, where our youth need to be grounded in that reality for the stability, strength, and durability they need for for them to balance themselves and thrive and grow and contribute to the betterment of their people. <laughs> Honorable Speaker, I'd also like to thank the Bunyabu Choir for their specially composed song about their Naita. The Itoke Trust Fund for their showcasing of the Yao Kamarangeti Kereo. Lastly, Honorable Speaker, I'd like to thank the, the chiefs and people of Rewa for their visionary leadership, contribution and cooperation and call collaboration at the two-day Provincial Council meeting, the Rewa Day that was held over two days, and the Thanksgiving service. So last week, Honorable Speaker, sir, was quite an ev eventful one. And to the beautiful women, the housewives of Rewa, what else can I say? They are did themselves, Honorable Speaker. From the finely woven mats for the Bokamamata to the finely fired Lapita-style pottery, the food the delicacies of the Tembara was outstanding. Amen. I would like to thank the Lord for the beautiful, cool, fine weather he blessed us with the whole of last week. And my prayer is that the Lord will continue to bless us all. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I thank the Honorable Member for contribution to the debate.